Welcome to our second season of the Power Connector podcast. I'm your host, Derek Dickow, where I enjoy conversations, having a little bit of a curiosity conversation, also just a friendly conversation with people I admire and respect in business. And joining me for the start of our second season is Jason Krieger of Krieger Klatt Architects. Jason and I have known each other for several years. He's a leader uh, in the architecture space, design, and has worked with some of the most impressive commercial real estate developers across the country, uh, locally based here in Michigan, and uh, just got a great, fantastic story. Jason, welcome to the start of the second season of the Power Connector podcast. Well, thank you for having me here, Derek. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I said to say that, you know, what you do is amazing. Frankly, uh, we have been, I think, three times we have visited your Power Connections retail uh, uh, event in Birmingham. We love it. And it's become kind of like, a, for us, like a little uh, holiday for me and Jeff, my partner, Jeff. Yeah. We love spending the day there. We love sponsoring it. And we get a lot out of it. And what's even uh, more amazing is I, I can't believe how you get the, that many people and like such high end people there for that. So. So thank, so thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. We, we can't produce those events without our friends and sponsors <laughs> and people that believe in us. So I sure. pre appreciate that. A uh, great way to start the conversation. And one of the ways I, I, I like to start pretty much every conversation, whether I'm talking to somebody I haven't seen in 20 years or I'm talking to somebody I just met or I'm talking to my you know, seven-year-old nephew. I, I tell me, like, what's new and exciting in your <laughs> space? I, there's a lot going on that you guys are focused on. So where would you like to start? Yeah, there is. So what's new and exciting in Career Clatland? Right. So uh, there's there's three major things I can think of. And they really started about a year, year and a half ago. And the first thing is we restructured our business. OK. And I can get into that later if you want. But we, we restructured our business. We're rebranding our entire company right now. Uh, soup to nuts all the way through. That'll roll out later this year. And we're moving offices. So we're in Royal Oak currently. And we bought another building in Royal Oaks. We like being in that area. Yeah, it's just we needed more room for our, our, uh, our employees because things changed, right? COVID changed everything. and We needed more space. We have too many people in the space that we're in. And we give flexibility uh, with working from home from time to time. And so we want, pe we want to encourage people to come in to the office. So we have a lot more like just fun spaces, breakout areas, hall rooms, things like that. Yeah, got to imagine a space like yours. Uh, collaboration is a big part of what you do and you need eyeballs and expertise and, uh, people, um, you know, sharing some opinions on projects that uh, are important. It's, it's, it's huge. And what's funny you say that because that is one of the major things that's changed since, since COVID is video conferencing. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to go down the weeds a little bit, but historically you would have a conference table and everyone sits around it, all four sides. Right. And you, you put the paper in the middle and, and you draw on it and sketch and this and that. Now what happens, right? Everybody sits on three sides and they look at the monitor. Mm. So, what changed now is you, you're going to have conference areas that are a little bit more uh, like loose, a little more free flowing where people can go up and touch the monitor and draw on it and stuff like that. Mm. And so that that's part of one of the things, one of the reasons why we moved is, is that we created that. We created a very large collaboration area in the back, which is attached to a kitchen and an animal and outdoor area. So it's not only a meeting room, but it's a hangout space. Mm. Clients, like if you came there and say, Hey, I have a project I'm working on. I'll say, Hey Derek, let's go in the back. It's casual, man. You want a beer? We have a beer tap whole nine, right? relax and then we talk about your project you're sitting on couches you're not sitting at a conference table mm -hmm. so a different experience and I like so that. we're setting that up for because you know we're mixed between commercial and residential mostly commercial i think maybe 20 percent, 15 percent residential like single family residential and so we have to we have to you know cater to everybody so for a, a residential client to come in definitely a much looser meeting you go back there you chill out on the couch relax mm -hmm. you know and you talk about your job so that's that's one of the reasons why we yeah, I got to imagine uh, a client comes to you because you do residential and you do commercial mm -hmm. that you can develop a client and they might stay with you for 25 years. I that's, mean, that's the backbone of our business. Yeah. Explain right? that. Explain that to me. How, how have you been able to, to do that over the years? Relationship well, build with a client and get them so comfortable with you that they'll give you every project that they're working on. I'm going to be blunt. You, you bust your tail for them, mm -hmm. right? You take care of them. You know, you have to deliver a good product. Everyone knows that. But you have to make sure that you're, you're Johnny on the spot for him. You're responding to him. And when there's a deadline, you hit it. Um, and then on top of that, you know, obviously, you have to do, do a good project. But it's just respecting him, right? Respecting him. And then also, the one thing that the older I get, you know, I'm getting up there, is um, when I, I try to 
teach the younger people in our office is that we have to provide value. That's the biggest thing mm. is provide value. So if a client says, you know, I want to do X, Y, Z, and I know it's not right. You know, I don't just say, Hey, you're wrong. You know, I'll say, okay, we get it. We talk about it, but I, I try and guide them in a certain way. And, and because we're adding value, we're adding money and value to their project. Mm. Right. So, you know, we want things to be beautiful, but we're very pragmatic where we are. And we want to make sure that our clients make money <laughs> to, be, to be totally blunt. Sure. So and that's probably the biggest one is adding value. And the rest of it goes away. Yeah. I mean, that's, that comes along with expertise and kind of understanding mm -hmm. the trends of, of what, uh, what makes sense. Right. Um, sometimes you might have to talk to a spouse about this doesn't go in the house, you know, there's, <laughs> there's pause on putting this uh, golf right. simulator here in the basement here that you only have so much space for. Right. Um, but the value you provide to people is, and I know this just based on your reputation and from people that have talked to me has also been confidence mm -hmm. in that you, your reputation has been great over the years. So you guys are we first, first class firm. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned you started when you're 17. Yes. Uh, so this has been a passion for you as a child. You grew up on a paper drawn 3d diagrams. I mean, explain oh, yeah. how, how, did, how did this come to be that you're the president of this big company? probably I would say medium sized company, but still I, I'm just, I'm kidding around. Um, uh, so I started out probably like everybody else, most people probably in architecture where I was an art artistic kid and I initially wanted to like animate for Walt Disney or do some stuff like that. Cause that was my exposure to the world. It was different. Though. There was no internet. So my exposure was comic books. It was cartoons on TV. It was movies. And so that's where I gravitated towards. And then when, once I learned how they made those cartoons, where you have to draw thousands of images with an arm moving a little bit each time. Mm -hmm. I said, this is not for me. And I, I still remember I was at, I think it was Myers, it was Myers. And I picked up one of these house books. And when you open them up, it was like the kind of books, you know, you can say, I want to buy plan B, whatever. But they had renderings of these homes. And I, I saw these, and this is back, this is way before computer renderings. And these are artistic renderings somebody did by hand. And I was like, that's what I want. It just, it grabbed me. Wow. And that was it. And, and I was probably 10th grade something like that, ninth, 10th grade. And so then, um, my, fortunately, my high school had two architectural drafting classes and I was able to take those. And then my senior year, there was a, there was a guy five, six years older than me. And he came in looking for like an apprentice or someone to work with. And he wasn't licensed, but he was drawing house plans. And so I vied for the job. I got it. And so he was my first job. I was 17. I was just graduating. Wow. So, you know, working in his basement, drawing home house plans. And then it just went from there basically. And so you, you partnered up with, with Jeff Klatt and then mm -hmm. you started this company some 20, 25 years ago. So, uh, we started career. Klatt. So I left my day job in 2005. Um, and then Jeff and I partnered in 2011. Okay. But I've known Jeff for, we worked, um, there was a company in Birmingham, literally right around the corner from here, uh, called Carnivale Associates is right on Le uh, Cole street. Mm -hmm. And I was working there. We had an opening and Jeff and I went to college together. So then I said, hey, man, come on over here. And this is 99, 98, something like that. Mm -hmm. So we worked together all that time. And then we were just, you know, we just became good friends, you know. And I mean, he's rock solid. He's better than I am. And so, and, you know, I went through, I left 2005, went through the recession. I actually taught for a little while because, I mean, jobs dried up. Mm. I don't know if you remember. I'm sure you remember, Derek. But yeah, it was. It was, times. Yeah. It was I think uh -huh. at the, and this is a funny story. So we did some, we did a house on uh, Lakeshore. I forgot, it was right here in Birmingham. <laughs> And it was the only building permit they had that year. True story. The, the building for still met. So we only had one building permit this year, and that was it. And so, anyways, in 2011, uh, the world was coming back and fast. Mm -hmm. And so, for whatever reason, I was picking up a lot of market share. And Jeff and I always talked about partnering up. And I just said, man, this time. Just leave, 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 leave Frank. We love him, but leave him. And we started Career Clat. And it was, uh, there was probably seven of us, six of us, something like that, you mm -hmm. know. And, yeah, so and now you got a 28 person firm, 23, I think. 23 I person 23. firm. Yeah. We went to 25, 20, it fluctuates around like mid twenties. Yeah. What, what's been the, the key to your success to, to building a good corporate culture so that you can attract other people to your company? All right. Good question. Um, I would say school of hard knocks, meaning Jeff and I screwed up a lot of things mm -hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. And what we learned is to, you know, a, if we're bringing in somebody who's younger, mentor them, train them up make sure they're exposed to every part of the business. Um, be, you know, great, you know, client, uh, you know, communication, things like that. And, and then see uh, what we learned later on was how the projects flow through the company. 
So for, for a while, if I can digress for a second. Please, yeah. Um, Jeff and I, we ran the business like anybody would. If you're two young men, you're just kind of going at it because they don't train architects to be business owners. Right? This you have to learn on the fly mm -hmm. or, or you're a nerd like me and you're reading business books and stuff like that and like what did other people do? And so it was, there were my clients, his clients, right? And then with that, I had my people, he had his people under one roof. So it was like two companies under one roof. So that's not scalable. It's not sustainable. It's something that I found, we both found, opens up errors. You might have somebody who's not in the right seat doing a project, mm -hmm. right? So we retooled that. And then now we have a, more of a design department. We have different departments, design department, construction document department. We have like a management department. Mm -hmm. So now it flows through the company more linear. And you, you, you can hire for the right spot. Mm. basically is what we're doing so you were able to identify some positions that you needed filled and yep. then you put the talent oh, yeah. in and you get the right, right people doing the right jobs 100 percent. so we're sitting there going let's say for example like all right we need an artistic person who's going to be a designer that's the app you have to find somebody mm -hmm. and if you can't deliver that or show us you can do that you're not the right fit for that perfect whereas before it was you know whatever come on in you're a smart person and then you know and then what, hap what happens then is the principal's jumping in all the time on the minutia, trying to mm -hmm. keep it going. It's just not, it's not how you can, it's not sustainable. It's not scalable. Yeah. You mentioned that word scalable a couple of times uh, yeah. that we've been sitting together. So t t tell me a little bit more um, as you're approaching your 27th year in business, right? So you've been doing this since, since you're 17, your first design that you were paid for. 31 years. 30, I'm sorry. 31 My math years. is a lot. Yeah. I'm old, to give you a couple, Derek. Come on. I've been trying to give you a couple years here. <laughs> Um, as, as you start to take a peek at the next 10 to 20 years for you, you, you mentioned the word scalable. You mentioned that uh, designers, architects are not business people. So you're inv invested a lot of time oh, into yeah. yourselves, into learning, into right. preparing yourself to create a, a, a more robust business so that it can be scalable. Right. So how, how, do you, how do you plan to attack the next five to 10 years uh, as, as you lead Krieger Clatt today? Good question. So um, when we restructured the company, we found it was the right thing to do. And the reason why I say that is there's a lot less stress on people because we have proper managers. Like the, our team, our directors, construction, design, interiors, office, they're amazing. And then the people, everyone else is, is amazing, right? So we found those right. And also what we found is that we can do more revenue, more volume with the same number of bodies, which tells me something, Okay. So moving forward in the future, let's say, you know, so Jeff and I, and, and Jeff more so than I, more, more so than I, for some reason, maybe because he wants to retire sooner. I don't know. We'll see. But, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's what do we, how do we sell the business? We don't want to just, sh you know, shutter the doors and move on. That's, that's, that's crazy. We have, in our opinion, and this, we say this with, you know, zero ego, we have an amazing book of work and clients and we take care of them. And they, they take care of us and it's, a, we're, we're partners. That's how we see it. So the way to do that is to, you know, bolster, train, and create a very strong group behind us so that if he and I have to, you know, part, you know, pare down our hours or whatever it is, everyone still gets the same career mm. clad experience. Mm. And so that's what we're working on right now. And I don't know when I'm going to retire. You know, I, I don't know if you do. And nobody does really. No. At some point, at some point, you don't. But architects never retire. That, the saying is architects leave the building feet first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and that might be the case, but, but, or you're that guy who sits there and falls asleep at noon at his desk, but you're just sort of there like the token architect, right? So I don't know, but, but what we want to do is build it so that we can sell it and give it to another crew mm -hmm. to, to keep on going and, and meet even more, you know, better clients, you know, better you know, partners and people that we can do work for, do amazing things for. I mean, we, I see this and so does Jeff is in, and I hope most of the people that work for us is this is a hobby, a passion we get paid for. This is not a job. I'm not going to, no offense to, you know, Atlantis, Atlantis, Christ, or whatever. I'm not going and punching buttons somewhere. You know, mm -hmm. we're actually creating things. People come to us and they say, I mean, how cool is it? They come to us and go, hey, I have a plot of land. And we want to do a multifamily or mixed use project there. We're thinking this, what do you want to do? And then we take our years of experience. We take our knowledge. And it's not just me. I'm not sitting there like, like the wizard behind the curtain. We have a team. And we sit down and we go, okay, here's what we can do. And with all that knowledge, you drop it on there and you say, here's what you can do. And you start to go, it's amazing. It's an yeah. amazing thing. 
How, how do you find uh, you know your best information is staying with trends that are exciting? You know, sometimes I walk into these buildings now and in the amenities and the th things that the designer thought about yeah. to bring this building to life and to give it that character. To, where do where do you find two, that inspiration? Two two things, in my opinion, is a and I use this word already. I think today it was nerd out. Books learn. Books. Don't don't just sit there and be complacent. Right, never. The other thing is, uh, I found teamwork, communal, because you're going to have somebody else in your group who may have seen something else, and they say, well, "What about this?" And it's this off the wall idea, and it, it happens all the time. And you're like, "It's brilliant." So that's how you keep elevating things. You know, we had a project. Um, where we, we took it over. It was from somebody else first. Um, and it was just, a, it was, a, I'm not going to name names or, but it was a mess. And they came in and then our team and one of our, our lead designer, Ray, he just says, well, what if we did boom, boom, boom. And everyone's like, holy cow. Like it was like that ta-da moment. Mm -hmm. And this thing that goes back to what I said earlier about adding value that added major value to this project. It's way better and it works. So that that's kind of, so you're always pushing each other pushing each other you know like we try to always critique each other in the office mm -hmm. so like this morning I, i'm working on a project down in florida i'm like jeff i'm kind of stalled so, you know whatever you know creative issues and so jeff says Donnie starts noodling around on the trace paper like, what about, 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 about. that's how we work we're very collaborative and there's no egos zero do you, egos do you do you spend time together as a team to say all right we have this project coming up let's use this block of time to, for creative ideation and we're just going to kind of open it up or is it a little bit mm -hmm. more freer in terms of how you guys come together every every wednesday at 8 a.m there you go okay yeah, that's, have that's eight, i think it's 8 to 10 or like to 11 but in, in some some weeks we do it some weeks we don't but it's like a pin-up time and if you have something that you're like hamstrung on you mm -hmm. just bring it there and go what do you think and everyone just throws their ideas man and i gotta tell you like it's good to have a, a you're kind of the one thing about architecture school is good is you're, you're trying to have a thick skin, mm. you know, because when you're doing your crits, you know, you're putting up your stuff on the wall and people just tear you up. Um, we like to look at it as, yeah, sure, tear each other up, but like make it positive. Like, hey, look at what about what about this? You know, versus that sucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I so, mean, ultimately, you, like, don't, you you want to avoid the client saying that, so I get mm -hmm. it. So you guys do it with each other. That's actually a very smart way you know to do what? it. I don't care if the client says. Yeah, you know, I've been there. I've gotten, you know, I've, I've, I've presented something. So I thought it was great. And the client mm -hmm. just goes, you missed the mark. All right. That's fine. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. You got to communicate. Absolutely. It's cyclical. I, that was a good term I heard when I was young, that design's cyclical. And I've never forgot. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to throw it out there. Just see. Yeah, you never know. I mean, you have to, they're paying you for your ideas right. and your what you've seen and your expertise and, yeah. and the books that you've read. Right, exactly. And uh, they kind of rely on you to help guide them in the right direction. Right, exactly. Um, is there a particular project that you look back on over the years? Say, you know, we had some obstacles to overcome on that particular deal, but it is my pride and joy. Well, that's a good question. There's, there's a few of them. I would say, so yeah, definitely. And I'm going to answer that. There was a period in my personal growth, uh, oh, not personal, uh, professional growth and career class professional growth where we had this influx of, uh, or all of a sudden the project scale grew quick, right? We went from doing projects that were, I don't know, single family homes, um, smaller commercial, you know, all of a sudden the scale jumped very quickly, like over the court from, I think 2015 to 2017, right? So one of them is um, Royal Oak City Center. Okay. It's great. Uh, Beautiful legacy. project yep. with Bo G, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, the other one was, I would say, um, well, Trailhead, but there weren't too many obstacles. But Trailhead, now it's called Icon, Hyatt Place. We did that mm -hmm. in Royal Oak. And then Zen, uh, the Unicorp development um, right at I-75 and Big Beaver. Mm -hmm. So that, whole, that apartment. All these big jobs just sort of jumped into our lap. And so we said, well, yeah, we'll figure out what to do it, right? So there were a lot of learning curves with that along the way. So, but I got to tell you though, creative projects, all three of them. Yeah. Big, big, big jobs. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're able to leverage that to other, you know, other deals we've done all across the, you know, East coast, but you learn a lot. And thank God the people who were on those, even though like, there were some difficulties, but thank God they're still with us because now they're not. Now the, our team walks in and like, we've done it all. We go, yeah, got it. We've done that. Yeah, thank God they didn't leave. You yeah. know, so it just makes career class stronger. You know, and that's that's our belief is you don't have to be perfect, but learn from it. 
mm-hmm. you know, move on and make sure it never happens. My old boss, Frank, he's, he said, I'm, I'm, he said, I've effed up everything once. <laughs> and I, I never forgot. That. I think that's yeah. a good lesson. I like it's that. Okay, it's okay to mess up once. Yeah. You, know, you learn from it. Learn from it. Yeah. And you grow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, is there, um, so we talked about the three projects that you enjoyed the most, the pride and joy. Mm-hmm. Um, how have you, like some some of the developers that you work with, they are highly recognizable. They're yeah. in the newspaper. They're, you know, nationally recognized oh, projects. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, part of your business is, I think a big part of it is service. Mm-hmm. And, and you mentioned value, which is a big part of what you, and over-delivering, which is what you do. We try. We try, yeah. Yeah, and your expertise is what they, they come to you for. But but a good, a good portion of what you do is is out there reassuring people that you're the right right firm. Mm-hmm. So how, how have you been able to network and build the trust that we talk about in sales, right? People have to know you, like you, trust you to refer you business yeah. or to be confident in your work. So how have you been able to build that rapport with people that are so you know, substantive in terms of their development projects. You're very, very good at this. I like this. <laughs> uh, it, you know, it, it's, um, so these days it's a little bit easier because we can keep, if we get a referral from another developer or whatever, I mean, it's, you're kind of dialed in. They, they get, they know you can do it. You know, mm-hmm. before when we were younger, it was, I'm going to be honest, it was a lot of be free work to show them you can design it, to show them that you have to kind of prove yourself to do it. And I, a lot of people do it. You know, if we're going after a big proposal, uh, we might do some, that's called test fits and, and things like that. And we'll just do it at our, on our dime to, to show we can do it. You know, we take it to a point, mm-hmm. you know, but there, there's a lot of that. It's just, you know, showing you can do it. But at this point, you know, we've been around long enough that, you know, it's it's easy to go to some of the other people around town. They'll go, oh, yeah, we heard you. And that's not bragging. It's just because, you know, we get around, <laughs> we get around, you know. So, but, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's the thing. But like b- back in the, Day, this is funny. You might get a kick out of this. Is when I was uh, when I left Frank Carnavali when I was in 2005. I don't want to do the math on my age. I was young. I was 27, 28, something like that, you know. <laughs> and nobody knew who the heck I was. I mean, I was so I had maybe ten thousand dollars worth of work in the books. Okay, I had maybe eight or ten thousand dollars in the bank. That was my that was it. And I had two rental properties that I had to handle if something went wrong. And so. I sat there, I was standing outside. I worked out of the house for about four months, something like that. I had a couple jobs. And I remember standing there on my on the front sidewalk. I live in downtown Rowland, basically. And I'm just I'm just calling everybody I know. I'm like, hey, got anything, got anything, got anything. And then so I'm sitting there and nothing's coming, right? So I'm sitting there going, oh my God. So then it kind of hit me and I went, all right, if everybody in the Royal Oak, Birmingham, Ferndale area knows who I am, I at least have a shot at their work. And then I'm like, well, if everybody in Southeast Michigan knows who I am, I got a shot at their work. So what I did was, and this is what I think really made things kind of start to go up. I joined every chamber of commerce I could. I went to the Asian, Asian, you know, Pacific Asian, you know, conference. I went to, I went to everything and, and, uh, and I got involved in everything. So I literally spent about two, three, four or five years. I didn't sleep. I went to every chamber event. I went out drinking with everybody. So I got to know all these people, these business owners, these developers at that level, at least. And that really helped drive, you know, money uh, and jobs. And that was the main thing, jobs over to me. But it was just like, I'm like, hey, the survival, right? But it's kind of what, I did it way less sophisticated than you. But the idea was, I was in front of everybody. You picked up the phone. You yep, let people right. know, I'm right. open, I'm in business, I'm here to help. Yep. What projects oh, might yeah. you have? Who can oh, yeah. you refer? Think about the lunch. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so you invested, let's say, two to five years of building that, mm-hmm. um, making relational deposits in people, Absolutely, right? Attending yeah. their events, yeah. going to their, showing up, taking them out to a, a drink or to golf or whatever it, it was, all to, to develop relationships. If someone wanted to do that, a little quicker and condense some of those time frames. what advice would you have for them? Hmm. What do you mean by that? Like for some people that are starting out, yeah. right. They, they may not be able to wait two to five years <laughs> to invest, to invest that time. But here you right. are, you built a brand, yeah. you built a reputation, you have, you know, premier architecture firms in the country locally based, but you put in a lot of time early. Probably these days, social media. So you, it's you're different. Using- that wasn't around them. Like, so, so one of our clients, uh, we still work with is Hunter Roberts Holmes. 
you know, and they're great. So I'm plugging them, but, and they do single family, obviously. And, and I high, walked, high level, high level. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. But I walked in there. I just literally walked in, spoke with Todd and Rick and, and, but that's what you had to do back then. Um, nowadays you could probably post things on social media, which everyone's going, but I don't, the, 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 the trick of that though, Derek, is that how do you get in front of the owner? How do you get in front of that person? And probably start with social, but the other thing though is with single family homeowners hit the social media, which mm-hmm. we're pretty lax on. We're not the best on, and we're trying to get better at. It. So that I think is a good avenue these days. But I, I still think sometimes you have to go in there and just knock on the door. The good old fashioned, right? Show up, shake a hand, I'm and let them you, know you're open and ready, like, to, ready to like do dating. business. Kind of like dating. I mean, nowadays dating, I guess you swipe left, right, whatever. But my day, it was, you know, I met my wife, and you know, we met at the Chamber of Commerce event. Right? It was that simple right <laughs> you're like hey how are you yeah <laughs> you know? yeah the good old-fashioned showing up and networking huh? yeah exactly that's funny that that'll never go i don't think yeah. I, I i think and i appreciate your your the tech right i think technology we have to use it better we have to get smarter we have to learn right we have to either follow the the the, the leaders that are doing it read a book or bolster up our expertise in social right. media uh, but i agree with you i i don't think anything replaces the in person, the face to face, the handshaking, uh, being present, and just mm-hmm. being in the same room with the right people. At yeah, the right I agree. Time. I don't think anything will ever replace that. No, no, I agree. So let's. Um, I, I would love to because I, I we never know who's watching or listening to these interviews, and and sometimes I think people that have interest in our guest and what you do as a profession. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it could be like 20, 25 years old. Hey man, you know, Jason Krieger's on the show. I want to learn, what can I learn from Jason? Um, you know, I thought you gave some great nuggets in terms of showing up to the events, taking people, picking up the phone, calling people and even just knocking on their door and showing up. I mean, this is priceless. Mm -hmm. And the more people we hear it from people, the more it kind of reinforces that that's the kind of stuff that it takes to win in business and and gives you the edge over your your competition. It's hard work. It's hard work. It's a, you don't just show up after 26 years or 27 years and I'm the president of this big company by mistake. Yeah. No. You put a lot of time into it. No. I mean, so when I quit Carnival, back to what you were saying, was, you just jog something in my brain, right? You know, I remember sitting there at Frank's and I love the joint, you know, and he actually offered uh, an ownership position to me and Jeff. He wanted us to buy into it. And it just wasn't the right, you know, I don't, it was design both for me. I didn't want to do construction. Right. He wanted us to buy into the architectural and he just didn't have the right clientele and it's been there for a long time. And I thought that I could build something better. I don't know if I was statistical or not, but either way, it's what but I remember sitting there going, All right, it's two o'clock on a Thursday, kind of wound down. You know, if I had my own business, I could just go relax and chill out and work later on tonight. Right. So you, 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 I had these like delusions of grandeur in my head of what it would be like to own a company. So, so one day I walked in, you know, and I didn't plan it. I literally looked at Frank in his office. I'm like, man, my heart's not here. I'm not doing him any justice. So I walked in and said, Frank, you know, I quit, blah, blah. And so then I start my own company. And I've never worked harder <laughs> in my life. Yeah, right. There is zero downtime. Yeah. Man. Because it's, it's um, even now, I mean, you could say, well, Jason, you can, you know, you're chilling out here at the podcast. Or just, but it took, you know, many, many, many years to build a team to do what they're doing. But I got to tell you, when you're, sitting there by yourself, every second you're not working, you're not making money. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I worked, you know, nonstop. It was literally work morning till night. And back when I was in my house, you know, I worked, I was just sitting in my boxers and work until I had a meeting and I'd put a shower and then I'd go to a meeting and I'd come back. And finally I said, all right, I, got, I, I need a place to go. So I found, you know, you know, Toast in Ferndale. Sure. sure. That was my first office. It was mm-hmm. above that. It had a little 20 by 20 office up above Toast. Real small. Yeah. yeah, it was great. And then I hired my first employee and that was a big deal, whatever. But, but like, and then that's when things started to kind of like, well, you know, it started to become like an actual, you have payroll. And you're like, okay, I got to make payroll. But it was seven days a week. It's been seven days a week until maybe a couple of years ago. And now Sundays I try to take off. Yeah. If my wife ever sees it, she's going to say BS, you know, <laughs> you right. don't take it off. Yeah. So. yeah that's what, uh, w- before we started the podcast, you mentioned like, what's, what's a day look like? Is it nine to five? And I'm like, no man it's it's everything it's everything except i I do appreciate and i would love to get your feedback on this on disengaging Mm -hmm. so you mentioned sunday like i my i got a no screen i don't look at my screen on sunday no laptop Mm -hmm. no emails 
Uh, and then I do take some time off throughout the year to like recharge to. and refresh yeah. and go see the mm -hmm. sun and get that in my face. It's important <laughs> right. to do. It's healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you do a little bit of the same and it's been critically important to your success is having that, that window where you can just focus on Jason time and then kind of take a look at the next five to 10 years. Tell me a little bit more about that. So, all right. So, so day to day, like now weekly, I try and take Sundays off. It's one time my kid, you know, and my wife and this now I say, kid, cause usually she's, she goes shopping and this now in a good way. She's, she wants to, she needs her time too. But what's really cool about my wife, this is what I mentioned earlier is once a year, she just, I don't know if she gets sick of me or what, but she basically <laughs> kicks me out of the house. She's like, get out for four days, you know? And so maybe it's a trip to Boston or York, or wherever it is. But what I, I like to frequent um, a certain place in Palm Beach. Awesome, beautiful resort. You know, you go there. And that's actually where the epiphany came to me, actually, to restructure our business because it, something was bothering me. And, and this is a true story. Like me turning my phone off, basically, for a few days and sitting by a pool on the ocean with, you know, a coconut water drink, wherever the heck they have. All of a sudden, you know, you start to go, okay, this is what you do. Because you have to get away from the noise. You know, even, you know, I just listened to Arnold Schwarzenegger's new book, which I call Be Useful. So Be right? Useful. And he talks about at the end of every day, and this is true. I mean, at the end of every day, he just sits around in his sauna or hot tub, hot tub he smokes a stogie. And, but he preaches basically like turning your mind off, so to speak, and just think about things. Mm -hmm. You know, like turn off the news and turn off all that chatter. And I couldn't agree more. And I think it was a lot easier back when I was young. You know, because you didn't have any. Now it's just you have to make an effort to do it. And I think that's an important thing. Like I see your Apple watch over there, right? That thing is going to zing and ping you. With this and that. That's distracting, yeah. right? You got to take that thing and put it on the, put it the side, yeah. you know? And But that that's the whole point, I think, of, of getting outside of all that is, is to things will happen. Your brain will start to think, you know, differently and start to mm -hmm. solve, problem solve. And then things come up. And again, like, the recent thing with our company is a big deal. It was a major shift and it was the best thing we've done. It really was. Yeah. So, so taking some me time every year is an important part yeah, of your, your absolutely. practice. Yeah. It's healthy for you. You mm -hmm. just, you come back fresh, you come back ready and you come back with a couple ideas. Absolutely. That Look, I got clients you. like they'll go skiing. I mean, it's great. We all want to spend time with our family. Sometimes you just need to go off by yourself, mm -hmm. you know, go hike. You know, go ski, do whatever it is you do. You know, I like to sit by a pool somewhere. <laughs> so, I'm with sketch, you on that. Yeah, you know, yeah whatever, that's yeah. important to do that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so let's uh, let, let, let's wrap it up with um, maybe a couple pieces of advice for the up and coming specific. Maybe he's a single, a solopreneur, right? As mm -hmm. you were when you yeah. started your business, um, either in design or maybe he's a or she's an attorney or something. Somebody that really wants to aspire to be more successful in their future. Uh, they know that they got a lot of relational deposits that they, they got to make in their network, whether yeah. it's events or uh, knocking on doors. And um, I would just love to hear some advice that you have to help, uh, help guide some of those folks. I think it, it depends. Um, I like where you're going with that. Cause the one thing that I would actually love, the one thing I'd love to do is try and find ways to give more advice to younger people in business. Cause I, I came up from zero. Right. Again, it's, it's not bragging. It's just, I've learned a lot of things the hard way. <sighs> you know, I mean, there's the, the textbook answers, like set everything up, set up your, your, you know, your taxes, right. Your insurance There's all that textbook stuff. But to me, I think the major thing would be setting up your vision. If that makes any sense. Like what, what exactly is your vision for your company? It can't just be making money. Right. And then, and then, uh, try and get some kind of roadmap if you can, you know, and, and then look at the different pillars that you have to achieve, whether it's your goal, your, maybe it's a, uh, a goal of money. Maybe it's a goal of your mission, maybe whatever it is. And then say, how am I going to achieve that? But what I would do is I would look at, which we do nowadays, because again, we're old, we've been doing this stuff a long time. Set up like a 10 year plan and say, all right, what are we going to do this year? And, and what do we want to achieve? Following year. So at career clap, we have a, we do an annual uh, leadership team meeting, and, and we have a goal for the year. Yeah, and then we look at five years. That's what we do. You know, and then what do we do to achieve that? So um, when, you, when you do the, the annual leadership within the company, are you, you use an outside facilitator? Do you go to a neutral site? Are you busy this year? 
<laughs> I'll always have time for, for people like you that are yeah. focused now, on growth. We, we do it internally, but this year um, we're actually looking to, so the answer is we do it internally, right? Mm-hmm. For the leadership team. But uh, we just started last year, which is going to become an annual company-wide thing. And part of back what made me think of this, because we want to try and bring somebody in to speak about some topic, maybe mm-hmm. for 20 minutes with the group, you know, that kind of thing. Because the one thing that we, well, there's a lot of things we believe in at Career Clap, but the major thing is we believe in improving and, and having everyone learn. Okay. So we pay for, if anybody wants to take a class, buy books, you know, what, any, any way to improve yourself, the company pays for it, period. You're getting licensed as an architect, we pay for all your testing, pay for all that stuff. And, you know, we, we push people to keep improving themselves. We really do as part of their goals when we do reviews and at the beginning of the year for the previous year. But it's, it's just, you can, again, I said it earlier today, but you can never be complacent. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. That's what, yeah. I love that. Yeah. You're always learning. You keep moving forward. I love that you invest in your team. A lot of companies, sometimes you hear people say, you know, I got a big team. We do enough, yeah. but you know, they don't want to spend on the no. extra programming. Um, any special podcasts or uh, books you're reading today that uh, that we would find enjoyable? Well, well, I just told you the Arnold book. I listen to the usuals, like Joe Rogan. I like him. There, I mean, for for the if there's any architects out there, there's like the business of architecture. You know, those types of those types of podcasts are really good. And then other than that, I just hit different news channels, things like that, just to kind of keep me relevant. I like, I like the um, was it the P, PDB President's Presidential Daily Brief? It's on Spotify. It's pretty good. It's a 15 minute clip. Mm-hmm. And it's just factual. It's, it's not. Sometimes it might be biased, but it's pretty unbiased. And it's just here. The, here's the news in the world. Pretty good. It does a morning and afternoon. Yeah, morning. we, you and I grew up in an era where we saw some of that growing up uh, on the national news, where yeah. it wasn't so biased. Right. But today, it's really like. Oh no, no, it's yeah. it's terrible. Yeah, terrible meaning it is literally you get one or the other, right? Yeah, it's and, no, there's no in the middle stuff. No, but this one, I think, I think he tries to be in the middle. You know, it's, every now and then he'll throw in a couple jabs, but for the most part, <laughs> most part, it's you know what it's they fast. probably deserve the jabs, right? Hey, I mean, the, both it, sides yeah. are, are culpable. That's how we got here. Yeah, look, I mean, I've, I've lived my whole life pretty much like right down the middle, and I'm, I'm biased here or there, but for the most part, yeah, I think both sides need to relax. In my opinion. I'm a pretty chill guy. Yeah. Oh know? yeah. And absolutely. so I mean, I think everyone's just got to relax, just get the job done, and, and move on. So. Well, speaking of get the job done, uh, I appreciate um, the advice, the time, the leadership, yeah, and uh, friendship, of course. And uh, I know this summer we're going to have a, a couple rounds of golf that we're going to have Absolutely. to schedule oh, yeah. and, and yeah. work on the uh, enjoyable side of, of uh, <laughs> relationship building. But yeah, uh, it's been an honor to, to learn from you, grow with you, and uh, sincerely admire what you guys have built as a company. Reputation is first class. Um, the when you hear about your reputation from developers that I admire too, mm-hmm. I thought, yeah, these guys are the best at what they do. So we'll always find that a way. That means a lot. To, it really yeah. does. Yeah. We'll always we find a way to, yeah. to recommend you and to, and to refer you uh, to people that we know, Thank like, you. and trust. And so uh, if you ever need an architect, uh, Jason Krieger, <laughs> Krieger Clad Architect is the right guy for you to talk to. Um, and uh, again, I just wanted to say thank you for your thank time. You, Appreciate the conversation. And uh, this is the start of the second season on the Power Connector podcast. So I'm honored. Jason Krieger, honored. Krieger Klatt. We look forward to seeing you all soon and download uh, and watch us on, on wherever you uh, consume, whether it's social, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram. We'll be on all that jazz. We'll see you soon. Thank you.